So uh, our next speaker, guys, is, uh, is a gentleman named Zach Holsworth, who's one of the co-founders and CEO of Hint Health. Um, I, I met Zach, geez, I think it's going on almost four years ago now. And uh, uh, it's funny because I, in my career, uh, I, was, I spent about, a little about, over about 11 years in, in healthcare technology. I went into healthcare technology for the same reasons you guys as providers went into healthcare. I wanted to make a difference. This was 10 years ago. And uh, uh, my experience on the vendor side very much mirrored the experience that a lot of my clients in direct care had on the provider side. Because uh, here I was wanting to make a difference and wanting to make a positive change, right, in the patient-physician relationship and the quality and outcomes of healthcare. Um, and uh, and this was we started our company I think when Obama was coming into his first first uh, first term, the ACA gets elected or gets put in place, right? So I find myself five or six years into this business throwing every last dollar that we have and every moment that we have on chasing meaningful use certifications. Right? So, so that I could walk into your offices before you made the transition to direct care, right? To say, now you only have to check 64 more boxes to get paid less, right? And looking at you going, is, are, is, any, are we, is anybody, is any of this working? So, I mean, so it was, it was an interesting kind of disillusioning moment for me. Um, ended up exiting that business, had some client friends that had moved into what's now referred to as DPC. I don't think it had a name back then, but, you know, they got to get out of the system. They just want to care for patients. They want to do so in a different payment model that actually allows them the time and you know, access to care for patients. Um, and I was pretty intrigued with that because here are these doctors. They were very happy. Their patients were very happy. I ended up joining one of their practices. And about the same time, I got introduced to, uh, to these two crazy guys named, you know, Zach and Graham that were starting this business that was focused on this thing that you couldn't even spell back then, right? Um, and, uh, you know, but knew that this was the place where change could be made. So Zach's talk is, uh, is really talking, you know, kind of sharing his vision for direct care, which we talked about four years ago, which really made me quite motivated to want to join up and, uh, and help to make this reality. So with that, let me introduce Zach Holdsworth. Hi, well, so my name is Zach Holdsworth. I'm the co-founder and the CEO of Intel. And uh, thank you, Mike, for the intro. I really appreciate it. And Dave, thank you. Thank you so much for introducing today's summit. Uh, yeah, so um, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about actually our, our journey um, for why we started Hint. And, you know, I guess just a little bit of a story of what our vision is for accelerating direct care. Uh, and I'll also be making a couple of announcements as well. But I'll, I'll try not to, you know, pitch you guys too hard, but so I'm going to keep it pretty vision and also uh, discuss basically the vision for why we started the company. So basically, like, like many people who want to get into healthcare, um, my co-founder Graham and I, we really just wanted to make a difference. Um, and when you look at the healthcare system, for the, many of the reasons that Dave mentioned earlier, um, and I'm going to be beating a bush here, but this, this is a really f massive fundamental problem. And it's just broken so badly that it's almost... You know, when you try to explain it to your friends, it's actually really difficult to comprehend how badly the system is broken. So I'm a, I'm a space guy. I love spaceships and rockets and things like that. About six years ago, when I first got into healthcare, I was trying to figure this out. And it turns out, and I was actually flawed to find out, it turns out that the combined budget of NASA since inception, right? We're talking about man on the moon, you know, rockets going to Mars, everything, right? Is less than the amount of money we waste in healthcare every year. Right? It is mind-blowing, right? So just imagine what we could do if we could sort of have a dent on it. So this is just a really big problem. So I'm preaching to the converted here, but you know, we, we wanted to try to figure out what can we do to help change this. So given this context um, and the scale of the problem, our thesis was that incrementally improving this, the current broken system wasn't actually going to do anything, right? It's so badly broken, if we just incrementally improve it, we're never going to fix it, right? So what we were trying to figure out, are, are there ways that we could address root cause problems, right? Things that would strike at the heart of the, the key problems that we see in healthcare. And so, yeah, so we decided when we started Hint, um, we don't need a better mousetrap. What are the root cause things? What are things that we could do that address these root cause problems. So that's kind of the first of a sort of a trifecta of things we were looking for. 
The other thing is, is as, as technologists, and we're, you know, we're, very, we're actually super passionate about technology, we love technology, um, and you should make sure you, Graham just escaped, but you should make sure you pin down Graham, he's the mastermind behind this operation. Um, but we wanted to see if there are ways we could apply ac our expertise in technologies, in technology to basically see if there are things we can do to help fix this problem. And so that was the sort of the second then, obviously, for us. And actually, it's interesting, our company name, uh, came from that concept. Does anyone actually know what HINT stands for? No, my team are allowed to answer this question. <laughs> Any guess? I want someone to guess. Health information technology. Pretty good. It, it could have been that, but it's not that. <laughs> One more guess. It, actually, it, it could have meant that as well, but it doesn't mean that. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe it should have meant those things. So what, what it actually stands for is health intelligence. You know, we, we, we'd sort of look, you know, one of the things that sort of floored us is that when we looked at kind of the technology that we had seen, almost consistently in healthcare, the people we talked to, just generally speaking, um, sort of, excuse me, um, the people we spoke to, generally speaking, you know, had um, a terrible experience with their technology, right? It was fairly consistent. We're talking, you know, four or five years ago now, so things have changed, and you should go and have a look in that room there in the break to find out how they're changing. Um, but one of the part, one of our things we want to do is build into our core identity this concept of making technology intelligent, right? Something that's delightful, things that actually help, that you don't need to be an expert to use, that kind of thing. So that was the second thing. So when you want to try to address root cause problems, we knew we wanted to build technology, um, but the question we had was who, is, who, would be, you know, who would be our customer, right? Who, who is it that we would serve in healthcare? And so I've actually got another story to share, which was kind of um, on this journey to that discovery. So our previous company was a company called Wellness FX, and basically what we're doing is we're building direct-to-consumer clinical diagnostics capabilities Right, where you can order and release labs, sort of by just intermediating the kind of provider system, and then um, basically having this sort of telemedicine thing on top of it, where you could basically consult with a doctor or a nutritionist and get kind of some recommendations. And so, the the thing that was really interesting is we, and what the other thing we had is we had all these clinical outcomes. This is a kind of a snapshot. It's sort of all de-identified and everything, but it was quite interesting. You could start to see trends. This was actually an employer group. Um, and we would run these regressions on, um, you know, what are the things that actually impact outcomes? Uh, and the really interesting thing is we had spent all this time building this awesome, you know, data visualization layer and this great experience for consumers to get their labs and just all this stuff. And we had all these health recommendations that you could sort of get sort of semi-automatically and then a provider would approve them. It was just sort of this great idea. But it turned out that the number one thing that mattered when we looked at outcomes was all of that stuff didn't matter. The number one thing was whether or not there was a provider in the experience, right? It was basically binary, right? So, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, it, it was sort of in, you know, it was our first attempt, you know, we, you know, we, had, to, we had to figure it out you know, our way. But the interesting thing was it literally didn't matter. Well, our product was potentially, you know, basically the main thing that we were facilitating were these great conversations with, with providers, and that was a success. We, we sort of doubled down on that. So anyway, that, um, that, that experience, um, you know, the conclusion we came to is, um, you know, providers are so important, and so, you know, of course, we decided we wanted to build technology, we wanted to try to figure out how to address root cause problems, uh, and we wanted to serve providers, right? So that was kind of how we structured our journey, and it was really interesting. Yeah, so, um, so then the question became who, you know, what are we actually going to do, right? And it actually turned out to be really difficult. This was actually not an easy journey. We, we basically were trying to figure out, uh, when we looked at all the ideas that we were looking at, almost all of them seemed like this, you know, they, all, almost all of them were just incrementally improving a system that is just broken in such a fundamental way, right? We, we, we spent months and months and months looking for what we wanted to do. And nothing we could come across, we had all these great ideas how to make a lot of money, but when we sort of peeled the layers back, none of them actually seemed like they'd make a difference systemically to the system, right? And so, 
It's on that journey that we started to talk to folks like Dave Chase. In fact, actually, Dave is one of the, was one of the early inspirations for, for this company. His writing, and actually Dr. Lambert's right there. I remember reading your blogs really early on. And we sort of had this sort of, kind of like almost like a light bulb moment, where we just sort of went, this is it. And we, 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 we came across this movement and this community of healthcare providers who were basically changing the rules. They were structurally changing the way that the system was working. They were disintermediating the key parts of the broken system that are actually, you know, causing sort of the root cause of all evil and healthy. All these great things, um, and so, you know, we we sort of, you know, Erica Bliss. Who in fact, really, uh, Erica sends her apologies. She actually has a last-minute emergency, so you're not going to see her live, unfortunately. Um, but she invited us to the first, I'm proud to say we went to the first direct primary care conference, or at least we think it was, and we went to this conference um, and we were just blown away by the passion, it was a small conference, I think there was less than 100 people there, but we were blown away by the passion, the energy, and really just the, the sort of, this, you know, almost sort of naive approach, like we can change the system by just recreating the rules and doing it the way that we want to do it. And so, on the back of that experience, we decided we wanted to build technology, right, for direct care, right, which is addressing root cause problems, and help direct care providers, right, so or direct primary care providers. So that was sort of how we ended up at this sort of intersection of the, what we believe is, um, you know, an awesome place to be working. And so, uh, sort of moving on, we, the question was, okay, and actually, and so from this, um, our, our vision, right, became to, can we put the vision slide up? Yeah, so our vision became to help power direct care, right, and make it the new standard in, in healthcare, right? So this became our vision. And we believe that if every American had a direct care membership, it would end the US healthcare crisis. So, so, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, the, quest the next question was, what we're going to do, right? Because that's still sort of not super scoped, right? It's pretty bored. Um, and so we um, started down this customer discovery process. And there's this quote that I love, um, which is, so you guys probably heard this, Steve Jobs. Um, People don't know what they want, right? Until you show it to them. And so the experience we'd had was, um, we, would, we of course didn't listen to this, and we were asking people what they wanted. Um, and the number one thing people tended to sort of point to, and again, we're talking, you know, three, you know, almost four years ago now, um, the number one people would point to, I remember you pointing at this, Rob, was, oh, I don't like my email. In fact, he had built his own email. Um, and, uh, and so, we, you know, we sort of kept asking people, oh, you, you know, I want a better system for managing records and things like that. But what we had observed was when we didn't ask, right, when we didn't ask what people were asking, for, we just really observed what people were doing, what we had found is that it was the sort of business and administrative and billing and enrollment and all this other stuff that was sort of, wasn't the obvious thing, right, but when we observed people, we saw all these sort of you know, to be honest, train wreck situations, and we thought, hey, this is, you know, this is pretty interesting. The other thing which was really interesting, and this was really another light bulb moment for us, is that we were sort of thinking, okay, so what is the fundamental innovation in direct care, right? Well, you, you of course, naturally moved, well, it's, you know, deliver better clinical outcomes and better at communicating with patients and all that stuff, right? Um, but the thing that was interesting is when you really peel the layer back, layers back, in our mind, the underlying fundamental in in innovation in direct care or direct primary care is not a clinical innovation. It's actually a business model innovation, right? When you, when you fix the business model, all of these amazing things happen, right? And so, um, so you know, it was, it was well, actually my favorite example of this, it was my favorite simple example, and I probably don't need to explain this to this room, but the, is when, you know, if you're in a, a cash, you know, if you're in an insurance fee-for-service model and you are, um, if, you know, call your doctor and you're sick, right? Well, the, the, the business incentive is to say, oh, okay, you know, we'll come in and we'll, we'll figure it out and we'll treat you. And then, of course, you submit a claim and you get paid. Right, but 
often, not always, but often the correct clinical decision is to just say, you know, I'm going to e-prescribe something and just get some rest, right? Um, and, and so in a direct care model, and of course that's a really simple example, I don't want to dumb it down, but, um, but the, the, in direct care that, those incentives are naturally aligned. And that, of course, when you start sort of scaling out from there, um, it, 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 you know, it fixes a lot of things. The other thing that we thought was if the underlying sort of innovation is a business model innovation, what happens is there's all, all these sort of second order innovation. And this is something that we think is kind of pretty key. It's all these second order of innovations where it's like, okay, clinical, you start innovating on the clinical front, you start innovating on the technology front, on the communication front. All of these tools become real tools that you can harness and leverage to actually start improving outcomes, you know, reducing costs, so on and so forth, improving the patient experience, the physician experience, the quadruple aim, as, as Dave mentioned. And so that's, you know, that's sort of the, um, the other thing. And so, um, yeah, so basically, since then, we've been basically hands down trying to figure out um, what it is that, um, yeah, so, so anyway, so, so our solution, the thought process was, um, you know, if the problems we uh, solve are, you know, a business, business problems, so instead of building a clinical solution, why don't we build a, um, next slide, instead of building a clinical solution, why don't we build an administrative solution? Um, and that's kind of how we scoped down to that concept. Um, and of course, the interesting thing here um, is when you, um, so yeah, so the other concept that we, we had was, um, uh, and this is sort of kind of fairly foundational to how we architect our platform, but when we looked at, basically we studied the healthcare IT ecosystem and landscape, what we had observed is that, that it was dominated by these, these closed systems, right? Which, which tend to ring fence innovation um, and, uh, and, and also basically stagnate, uh, you know, basically ring fence innovation, they end up having high switching costs um, and they sometimes sort of get hard to scale as you start to sort of to move up stack. It, the edge cases start getting difficult to manage. While in under, other industry verticals, um, basically it's you know the opposite. You have sort of these open ecosystems um, where basically they're designed for scale. Often, you know, innovation thrives as a result of the um, the ecosystem sort of concept. You know, technologies forming around each other and becoming kind of interoperable. And also often you have generally have lower switching costs, right? Because you're not reliant so heavily on a single stack or technology platform. And so, so from here we kind of thought, okay, um, you know, uh, uh, th this was kind of one of the, the fundamental sort of things that shaped our DNA as a company is can we help develop intelligent technology, harness this concept of open ecosystems and really build into our stack the, this concept from day one. Um, and so one of the things that, one of the challenges of course with, with, with sort of more open ecosystems is generally speaking you need some kind of coordinating platform or some kind of source of truth or layer of information that kind of allows these systems to more elegantly work together. This is actually like pretty hard. Um, but so, you know, what we'd thought at Hint is, is there a way that we could help serve as, as the business administrative layer? And the other point here actually is that Generally speaking, right, um, in a direct care model, um, uh, you know, the administrative systems are generally speaking the kind of like the first point of contact with data, right? You get become a member and then all these things happen versus you sort of come in and have an office visit and then a claim is submitted, right? So the, the generally speaking, the, the technology is kind of generally speaking structured that way. So our vision was, okay, is there a way we can help serve as that coordinating platform? So that's why on day one, we built what's called an API. So I'm sure a lot of you in the room know what an API is, but for those of you who don't, an API is basically like a toy box where structured pieces of information can kind of get it into and out of the system. And so uh, in a way that's you know, basically kind of easy for other programmers to, in structured ways, connect their systems together. And so what we did is we actually built an API on day one. So the um, and it's actually hard to do on day one because you don't build the thing people are asking you for and it takes longer to, to deliver to the market. But what, what this means is that our application, right, the thing that our clients use, actually t uses, t connects to our database in the same way as other partners in our ecosystem, right? It's literally exactly the same. When we release new things, our partners get access to that. And so 
Um, so essentially, you know, what what um, you know what we've basically built here. Oh yeah, so an API. Let's go back to what an API is. So an API, what actually, if we, we'll spend a minute on it. What it stands for is application programming interface, right? And so it's a it's a way for without one of these, right? Um, it's really hard to connect systems together. So if you think of like this is the API, right? And this thing here, this block, you'd put it in. If it's not structured, it wouldn't get in. Yes, let's all computers talk to each other. <laughs> Here we go. That's what I, put, I should have put up on the slide. An API lets all your computers talk to each other. Um, but it's in the cloud and everything, so you don't have computers on the desk. They're up in the cloud talking to each other. Yep, that's a great example. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so what we did to our example is we built that, right? And then over here, we built a thing that talks to that, and then we opened up that to other people to talk to it, basically, right? So it means that you know you're not sort of having these two things where you, you know you change one and you have to change the other, and it allows you to, you know, basically do cool things, which we'll actually talk about. Um, and then we'll go on and talk about some other visiony things, right? So what we have built is a single unified layer that combines powerful business administration and automation with an open API that connects and coordinates with every other tool that it takes to successfully operate a direct care business. And in doing so, we have defined an entirely new category of product called direct care administration that streamlines the administrative challenges surrounding a direct care business. Um, and at Hint, we've basically built the first direct care administration platform. And so I'm really excited to sort of you know, share this with you guys and we're happy to talk about it more later. Anyway, moving on, right? What this has done, and this is really exciting, this has allowed what we're calling Hint Connect to foster, which is basically this ecosystem of partners that are all integrated with this API and this platform, and many of whom are over there, and please go have a look. Um, these are, a lot of these companies are our sponsors. But basically what's ha happened is this concept of sort of innovation is, is, is emerging, right? Um, organically and naturally, and we've got dozens of partners sort of coming online, which is really awesome. Um, and, uh, and the other thing which is interesting here is so, you know, if you think of the old world where everything doesn't work, um, <clears throat> in this new world, um, what, we've, what we've done here is essentially allowed um, for the types of experiences that you're probably not used to, which is where all of these systems, you can pick from the solutions you want to use, right? and in theory, they sort of seamlessly work and operate together directly out of the box. So this is the type of thing you can see where you know, have a patient enrolling in one system, it gets billed, then automatically a chart's created, those systems are kept up to date and sync real time, so any changes across those systems are mirrored. It's really awesome, actually. Um, and then, you know, instantly your patients, if they come through, say, an employer enrollment feed, then instantly they'll get their, their text from the doctor saying, welcome to the practice. And all of these can actually be multiple different systems that are all coordinated. So this is kind of the vision that, that, that we're sort of realizing with Hint Connect. So we've got a bunch of our partners here today. Um, we're really excited about this. This is kind of really a part of our passion around bringing a kind of intelligence to technology and healthcare. Um, actually, one of the, one of the partners... Um, Hint and Spruce. Spruce, uh, they've got some cool new features, and this was actually interesting. A lot of our customers, this is, I guess, an example of how this innovation thing happens. One of, a lot of our customers ask us for marketing automation things, right? Can you make it so I can message all my, my members, right? So what, what we've done here is through, um, with Spruce, they actually have built features. They're a communication system. They automatically know all the information about your population what plans they're on, if they're with employers, so on and so forth, you actually go into Spruce and generate a marketing automation campaign depending on rules that you define in your practice, which, are, which is really awesome and everything just works seamlessly. All right. Cool. So, a few stats here. So, um, you know, this is over just, you know, as we launched this program, there's been more than 200 patient records synchronized automatically, meaning that you didn't need to type it in, right, in two systems. The other thing that's happened is we're now sitting at about half a million updates a month. What that means across our customer base, right? So what that means is that half a million times that people didn't need to go into another system and update something, right? It's really cool. Now, of course, not all of those half a million times people would have actually updated things, so you would not have actually done that work, but then you would have had data that's out of sync. 
So this is pretty cool, and this is growing really quickly, which is awesome. Um, cool. All right. So anyway, so we talked about Hint. We talked about Hint Connect and the sort of our direct care administration platform, which we're really excited about. Um, but one of the things we've learned on this journey is that, and it's one of the things we've come to realize, is that we can't, uh, one of the things we've come to realize is that we can't just be a technology company. Um, and so we've, um, you know, in order to serve our mission of accelerating, of you know, basically uh, making direct care the new standard, we can't just focus on technology. So I'm really excited to announce, actually for the first time, um, our, publicly at least, what we're calling Hint Community. So when we started the company, we, we surrounded ourselves with all these great people and experts um, and, you know, operators and providers and people that were just really passionate and about delivering care. And so what Hint Community is about it's really about harness, harnessing this expertise, right? Allowing us to kind of uh, bring together people in the community to be able to communicate and you know riff on ideas and share expertise and best practices. Uh, and so, um, you know, basically the mission for this is to you know, to advance the direct care movement and to share and disseminate all the knowledge. Importantly, so that others can join the movement. Right? What we need to do is start making it so that it's easier to quickly get information, get involved in communities, that kind of thing. So, so that's kind of the mission for the community. And one of the things that's really important about communities and forums, and I wonder if this video will work. Cool. So this is. Uh, this is like a, you'll see sort of a background of the community, but one of the interesting things about communities is that without you know, strong curated content and sort of moderation from experts that understand the key concepts and issues, often what happens is you end up with a sort of runaway train which ends up being a disaster basically. So what we've done is we've really invested um, in trying to bring people into this community that can moderate and that can sort of help people understand, you know, I think this is one around Dr. Lambert's, um, but uh, you know you can engage, but you can also kick people off if they're trying to sell you stuff, right? And so you know, which actually, Robin, who we're, who's sitting right back there, say hi, Robin. Yeah, yeah, we're really excited to have her. We've got a bunch of moderators, but Robin's the sort of Uber moderator. She's got, she's actually got more. Go, uh, it's called God Mode in, in Techland, but she's got more access to this thing that I do at this point, which is cool. Um, but anyway, the idea is, is that we're trying to bring together you know, the hearts and minds of this movement and try to help figure out ways of sharing and disseminating knowledge. Um, we're really excited about this. Um, this has been a big investment for us because it, it's, you know, it's like a, um, it doesn't just sort of happen overnight. It's something that you need to invest in. Easy to register. You just go to community.hint and you can get involved for free. Um, there's, that, there's basically locked categories, so if you get in there, you can sort of have um, more intimate conversations um, while there's less sort of unlocked categories, so everyone can kind of consume the content. So a few stats on, on Hint Community. Um, so this is, this, we soft launched this about two months ago. So since then, there's been 50,000 or 55,000 page views. Now, half of them are people page views, right? The other half, are, sorry, half of those are from people logged in and registered. Half of them are from, no, about a quarter of them are robots, that, you know, that basically Google indexing the site, right? And the other quarter is people searching for, for content and coming here and then consuming that content. And so within that few month period, there's about a, you know, about a thousand posts and replies, and that's um, really exciting. Anyway, so we talked about Hint Connect, Hint Community, and of course, the final thing here is, is Hint Summit. Um, and you know we're we're super excited about today. Um, this has been a lot of hard work. Our whole team has been really kind of jumping in and um, you know making this all come together. Um, but you know I guess what I wanted to say is this journey hasn't always been an easy journey for us, right? Um, especially actually early on when we we're pitching investors. Um, you know, I, I probably pitched 350 plus investors in the Silicon Valley and, and nationwide. Um, and, you know, a lot of them just thought we were literally bark made, raving mad, right? Like, why would you guys go and focus on, including one, this guy here, Fred, who didn't back me the first time, but then changed his mind. Um, <laughs> so, so Fred's on our board. He's one of our board members. Um, but anyway, what I wanted to do is just say that, it, you know, it hasn't always been an easy journey for us. Um, but, um, you know, the support and, you know, the, the I guess the, um, 
Oh, I'm going to get it off. <laughs> Basically, the support we've had has been awesome, right? So um, I'm, I'm super excited about today, and thank you guys so much. <laughs>